Hello and welcome. I am so excited to be sharing with you three ways that I know will instantly boost your confidence before you walk into a Pilates class. There's a lot more deeper work to do, which we can discuss later, but when you just need that quick fix, then these are the top tips that I can share with you today so that you can walk into every class feeling totally ready to share your knowledge and to connect with your clients. So welcome, you are in the right place and congratulations on choosing to step out of your comfort zone and to try something new. It takes a lot of courage and I think it's wonderful that you're here with me today. I know how much courage it takes to be able to do that. You're in the right place if you feel like you're just not able to communicate effectively in the way that you want to. You feel self-conscious when you're in front of the class and you're not sure how to change that. So today I'm going to share three main techniques with you. The first one is how your posture influences your confidence. The next one are some techniques to instantly hack your nervous system and they've all got to do with touch. And then the third thing is identifying three pillars that support your confidence. And I have a deeper course that you can go into to discover these three pillars if you can't do it by the end of this course. So just a little bit about me. My name is Tanya Haddad. I have been teaching movement for over 30 years and I've been teaching Pilates for um, over 27 years. I've also been training Pilates teachers um, for the last 20 years. And I know that the number one thing that usually brings people to me is the fact that they are lacking in confidence. They feel like they know what they're doing, but they don't know how to articulate it. So I can definitely say I'm here for you. I can help you today and beyond if you'd let me. But why am I telling you all this? Let me have some of my previous students um, explain to you in their words what it is that I've helped them to be able to achieve. So first of all, we have Haley, And I'd like you to just read what she has to say. Two of the key words that jump out for me there is the fact that Haley talks about transformation. The tools that I'm sharing with you in this course and my others will transform the way you teach. And the other word that jumps out for me there is confidence. She has confidence to walk into any room and to teach what she knows. Isn't that a wonderful thing to be able to do so that your knowledge can match what you are able to give. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Elissa. She's a massage therapist, yoga and Pilates teacher. So very highly accomplished woman. I'd like you to read what she has to say. Again, that word confident came out. Um, but I also love the fact that she feels like she can step into her role as a teacher, like she's grounded by having this confidence. And I also love her word use of clarity because once we get confidence, we get that through clarity by being really clear about who we are serving and why we do what we are doing. Now I'd like to introduce you to Sparkly Tara. She has a very electric personality and she is a very highly skilled person as well. So I'll leave you to read what she has to say. So many different things that Tara brings up there, but I think for me, the standout word here is the word communication. If we are confident, we can communicate clearly. If we know our teaching tools, 
then we can also get our point across and we can use our tools so that we can help people with different learning styles to understand what it is that we're trying to get them to do. For a lot of people, what we do sounds like gobbledygook in the beginning. So having the right tools will make you feel confident that you can express what you want them to do, that you can help them through various different methods to be able to um, improve on their movement journey. So here we come to the top tips to boost your confidence instantly. The first one is using power poses. Now this is research that was done by um, a woman at Harvard University called Amy Cuddy and they did quite an extensive um, research project on this. But the, base, the basic um, premise from this is that if we stand in big expansive postures, hands up, hands behind the head, hands on the hips, just like we can see on those pictures on the um, on the orange side, then we can boost our mood. We can lift our vibration and we can feel more powerful and confident. So before you go and teach your class, maybe just go to the bathroom and stand in the stalls somewhere for two minutes in these poses. And I would suggest that you might even want to say some positive affirmations that um, can really help you to boost that mood and to elevate your confidence before you move into the room. So things like, I am a good teacher. I can help my clients achieve their goals. That would be a great positive affirmation to have um, before you walk into a class knowing what your role is in that room is to assist others to do the best that they can do. So it's no longer about you. It's about you being able to facilitate and help somebody else. And contrast on the blue side, we have the low power poses. So these are generally our rest poses, but you can't feel powerful. You can't feel in control and you can't feel confident in those. That is for times where you don't have to show up and share what you know with the world. It's not that those low power poses are wrong or there's anything that um, you shouldn't be doing, but those are best for when you're finished with your teaching rather than before. Next are some nervous system hacks. So when we get really nervous, what happens is that we'll often start shaking a little bit. We talk about having butterflies in our tummy, right? So that is a natural response in your body. What we want to do in order to show up in a really confident way is to be able to just calm those nervous system reactions down. So they're really important because they what keep us alive. But when we're going in to teach and we want to give freely of ourselves, they're going to get in the way. So if you find that you are feeling a bit shaky, go with it. Start shaking. Shake your hands. Shake your body. Have a full body tantrum. Whether you want to lie on the ground, stand up, whatever it is that you want to do, just shake yourself. Yeah. And smile. Put a huge smile on your dial. You will feel so much better after you've done that. Another thing that you can do is you can use touch in different ways. So you could maybe tap. Some people don't like tapping and they find that really annoying. So then you could just stroke. So you could stroke your arm and imagine that you're stroking your favorite animal. And no, just remember what it feels like when you are stroking somebody or a child or um, maybe you want to um, just imagine somebody that you really care about, just stroking them or holding them, giving yourself a hug, maybe putting your arms underneath your armpits or holding onto your shoulders. All those things will calm you down and tell you that you're safe. All you're going to be doing is you're going to be sharing what you already know with people who really want to know what you know so that you can help them solve a problem. The next thing you can do is you can add some breathing. You can breathe in for four and out for four, for seven, for eight counts. You can hum or you can sing. So humming and singing are really good to elevate your mood again, to take away that sense of stress. 
So it's also a great thing to do to warm up your voice before you start teaching. So there are three of your nervous system hacks, using touch, tapping, holding or stroking, using breathing, humming or singing so that you can regulate your breath and you can tell your body that everything is okay. You're not in danger. All you're going to be doing is sharing what you know with people that you already care about. Or if it's really too much, then just do some shaking and just get it all out there. So what happens when we use these tools? We get instant relief from our lack of confidence. So combining your power poses and your affirmations. So practice them daily as often as you can to boost your, um, your confidence. And then your nervous system hacks you can use as well. Practice them daily as well. They'll keep you calm and help you to manage your stress. The other three pillars that will really help to ground your confidence deeply is to identify your values. Thinking about which beliefs you hold that might not be serving you so well in this instance when you're trying to be confident um, in your teaching ability. And then think about what is your attitude towards confidence. Is it a positive experience or is it a negative experience? So to build a confident future, you need to identify the problem. You need to implement a solution and you need to practice, practice, practice. So the more you can practice these tools and the more you can ground your confidence in your values and your beliefs, um, and identifying what is really holding you back from achieving your goal of being a confident teacher. Then you can start creating change in your life one step at a time. Don't try and do it all at once, just one step at a time. And once you feel confident with that, you can move forward to the next step. So what's going to happen if you don't at least try and make a change? Well, you're going to be exactly where you are. Nothing is going to change. So you're going to continue feeling frustrated. You're going to continue feeling that lack of confidence. And I'm pretty sure that you didn't enroll on this course so that you could feel that way. I'm sure that you're ready to make that change. So I have a question for you. Are you going to be the next success story? Are you going to make the change that will help you to step fully into your role as a Pilates teacher? So remember what you need to win this battle with lack of confidence is to improve your mindset, to have the right teaching tools and to have a supportive community around you to help you achieve that. I have a group called um, Teaching Movement with Confidence on Facebook. I'd like to invite you to sign up for the group. You'll find lots of inspiration there. It's a private group and we also have a free monthly masterclass. You don't need to do anything. It doesn't cost you anything. Just join this beautiful community of teachers so that we can all uplift and support each other. So right now you've got three choices. One is to go it alone, use trial and error, and see if you can find some success. Number two, you can go deeper into growing your confidence and sign up for the Grow Your Confidence self-directed online course. If you look over there, you will see that there is a coupon code that you can use to get 70% off the course. I really believe in these tools and I want you to be successful. I want you to succeed. And then number three is a much bigger project if you're up for it. And that is talking to me about how you can supercharge your um, route towards confidence by joining my Teaching Movement with Confidence 10 week online and coaching program. In this coaching program, you have access to me I will take you through every week for an hour, different teaching strategies and tools. There's a whole video library that you can um, indulge in and that can help to build your confidence 
as well as your teaching tools, the way that you communicate with your clients, um, and many, 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 many more tools that I can share with you there. So we will be looking at um, all of these different areas in our um, exploration of teaching movement with confidence. And how to improve your concentration, your flow, your confidence and your alignment so that everything can come together just like our Pilates principles. So if you want to avoid the frustration and the overwhelm and the waste of time, then join me in whichever capacity feels the most comfortable for you right now. So what will you choose? I want you to get clear on exactly what it is that you want. I want you to get clear on what is working and what is not working for you. What is holding you back from creating change? And I also would like to extend my hand and offer to help you reach your teaching goals. So if you would like me to help you, please reach out to either um, my email address or find me on the web. You can also look at the comments below in this video and um, or the description below and you can find lots of different ways to connect with me. So I look forward to talking to you and I wish you all the very best. May you step forward into a beautiful, confident teaching future. Mm -hmm.